I know lots of people use van life to get away from the world, but it's our home away from home. So we wanted to have a TV. So keep watching to see how we keep ourselves entertained on the road. Keep up to date by hitting the subscribe button. And you can visit us at explorevan.uk, where you can read more about us, our vans and our trips. Let's start by looking at our TV itself. It's not a camper van or motorhome model, it's just a standard domestic Alba TV and DVD combo, though it does run on 12 volts. As with many things, I've found you pay a premium for anything that's specifically for a certain market, whereas often standard home solutions are just as good and a lot cheaper. All you need to do is get into some shops and look for a TV that has an external power supply and an input voltage of 12 volts. We very rarely use the DVD player on the TV, but it's nice to have one and without having to carry an extra box around. Here's the actual power consumption of the telly in its various modes. We have three ways we get our TV. Standard terrestrial digital TV through the aerial, satellite, which I'll talk about in a minute, and also through the internet through our MiFi or Wi-Fi. For terrestrial TV, which we really only use when we're under tree cover or the satellite path is blocked, we use a status 570 antenna. We found this to be really efficient and yet to find anywhere in the UK where we can't pull in a signal. It's adjustable from inside the van for both direction and polarity, so you don't have to go outside and get wet and cold when positioning it. Plus, it has a handy booster and direction finder, so it's as simple as turning it on and finding the green light. For satellite, which we use the most, we have a Max View Crank Up satellite dish. We did consider an automatic dish, but I found that with the use of an app and a signal finder it's just as quick and relatively easy to use a crank up one which is a lot cheaper and has less to go wrong. We upgraded the dish to a dual LMB, but the latest versions come with this available. The app we use tells us the direction and the elevation with a handy map so that we know which way to point it. and the signal finder tells you you've got the signal. Over the years we've tried different units to decode our satellite broadcasts. The first option is a Sky box. Here we have a Sky HD box as it's nice and small compared to the latest Sky Plus boxes and it can be picked up really cheap second hand if you've not already got one lying around. If you've got an old subscription card, you'll probably find you can already receive most of the free-to-air channels. If you don't, you can purchase one for a one-off fee of £20 from Sky under their free Sat from Sky programme. The downside to a Skybox is it's limited to just the Astra 2 satellite and most are only 240 volts, so have to be used with an inverter if you're off-grid. The pros are it's really easy, just plug and play, you get a full EPG and it's user friendly. Alternatively you can get a cheap off the shelf 12 volt digital satellite receiver like this one from Openbox. Because it runs on 12 volts it's really easy to use off the grid, you don't need an inverter and it doesn't use a lot of current. The downside is it's less user friendly. It's a bit clunky to use, you need to update channels, rescan yourself if the channels move, and you only get a now and next program guide. A key advantage though is that it can receive signals from pretty much any satellite. So once you're out of reach of Astra 2, you can pick up the odd English language channel like BBC World and lots of foreign language channels on other satellites like Astra One or UTELSAT. However, our go-to solution for both in the UK and Europe is our Humax HDR1100S. This is a 12 volt 
FreeSat certified box, which means we get a full EPG, it's plug and play, and updates any channel changes all by itself. It also has catch up TV for most UK channels and Netflix built in when we're connected to our Wi Fi or MiFi. Fi. On top of that, it has two satellite tuners, hence why we upgraded the dish to a dual LMB and one terabyte of storage. There's also a cheaper 500 gigabyte version. This lets us record to the hard drive without a monthly fee like Sky Plus. We can record while watching a different channel, record two channels at the same time while watching a recording. And this means we had a huge store of films, TV series and documentaries so that when we're away from a satellite range, we've got something else to watch. The downside of the Humax is although it is possible to use it in non-freesat mode on other satellites, the functionality and flexibility is a bit limited compared to the open box, and it's a pretty expensive option compared to the others. With a great store of programs on the Humax hard drive, we use it a lot on the move, so as well as being connected to the TV in the back, it's also connected to this screen for passengers to view in the front. And finally, when it comes to movie night, we have our mini LED projector, which I'll talk about more in our next video. Thanks for watching our video, and as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful, please like, share, and consider subscribing.